Welcome to Part 7 of Tracing Without Tears. I've been getting a lot of questions about how to do point editing or node editing to clean up your traces. And while I've tried to show you how to trace so that you don't need to do this, I do want to give you some basics on point editing for those times when you'll need it. So let me just show you what the point editing tools are and how they work. I'm going to select my curve tool and I'm going to click points and you'll see that it draws a nice smooth curve in between. When I want to end the curve, I just double click or I can use the escape key. And then when I double click the curve, I go into point editing mode and I know that because I see the point editing window opens over here and I can see the points on my curve. The points are indicated by the gray squares and by the red circles. The red circles mean that it's an end point on an open path. To select a point, you want to hover over it until you see the cursor change to a square with a diagonal line and an arrow, and then click on it. A selected point will turn into a white square, but you'll notice some other things appear. You'll see two blue squares at the end of a long line. These are called the control handles, and this is how we control the shape of the curve. Now this is a method of curve editing that's been used in computer graphics for many years. You may have heard of Bezier curves, it's B-E-Z-I-E-R, and it's used in all the major graphics programs. It's not particularly intuitive, but it's a very powerful way to control the shape of curves with just a few points. If we lengthen one of the control handles, you'll notice that the shape of the curve changes. If we change the angle of the line between the points, we notice the tip of the curve changes. This line stays tangent to the curve. You remember that from your high school geometry. And you'll see that the two sides are linked so that changing one side of the curve changes the other. So we can take one point on this curve and we can make it very flat while we could take another point on the curve and make it pointy. Now you remember that the tangent line moves together. That's because this is a curve type of point or node. I can change this to a corner node by clicking over here on corner and now I can move these pieces independently and I can get a, a sharp corner this way. You'll also notice when you click a point that a part of the line turns red. Whether the, it's the point to the right or the left depends on what direction the curve was drawn in. This red is important because it tells you what part of the line is selected. In this case, it's the part to the right of our point. So if we click on Make Flat, it will make the red portion flat. We can go back to Curve and we've changed this point that was a corner back to a curve. We can select multiple nodes with shift clicking so that we can operate on them all at once. But we can't select multiple points by dragging around them because as soon as we start dragging we leave the point editing mode. So if you need to select multiple points you want to shift click. If you want to add a point to the line, you just click on it, and that adds points to the line. If you want to delete a point on the line, you can right-click and delete the point, or you can go over here to the Delete Point menu. And if you want to delete multiple points from a line, you can click Delete more than once, and it will keep following in the direction of the red line and delete multiple points. If we take our handles all the way around, we get a loop. You'll see that sometimes. Easily corrected by just rotating the handles. When you start playing with this, you can see that you can make many different types of curves, but usually to get the shape you'll have to work on both ends to get the curve to do exactly what you want it to do. Now if we draw a line with the Polygon tool, we'll see that the points have no handles. 
So to get handles on those, we need to click Make Curve first, and then Smooth, and then we'll get two handles. These endpoints snap together very easily to form a closed path, and once they do, they turn into gray squares. And we want to connect two lines. We need to connect a red dot to a red dot, but you'll see that I can't get red dots on both of these because I can only select one line at a time. So the solution to that is to take both of these, make a compound path, and now I've got red lines on both of them, and I can drag one to the other. The other thing you'll need to know how to do for point editing on traces is to break a path. Select a node and click Break Path. Now when we break a path, what really happens is it makes two points on top of each other and then when we drag away one of them, it opens the path. So one side stays fixed and the other side moves. How do we know which one's going to move and which one stays put? Because that's going to be important when we try to plan where we do our breaks and how we move our lines out of the way. Well, I'll show you how we figure it out. You'll notice that on this point, the red section of the line is in the clockwise direction. So on a closed shape, it's the red section that's going to stay fixed. So you'll see it's a counterclockwise arc that moved. It's different on an open path, however. Now that our path is open, still our arc is in the clockwise direction. But when we break the path here, it's going to be the clockwise part that moves. So on a closed path, the red stays fixed. On an open path, the red moves. That's going to be important later on. So that's just a brief intro to node editing or point editing. None of this is going to make a lot of sense till we apply it to a real-world tracing problem, which we'll do in the next video. Thanks for watching.